Evo nas opet pred jedno zanimljivo predavanje, kao što sam već rekla, danas će se na našem stadiju Broad Weeku obratiti med sa Univerziteta Korvinus iz Budimpešte. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, hi, I can hear you. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm, I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Well, great. I just had a, um, one interesting, uh, let's say, lecture about writing a good CV and motivational letter. Uh -huh. And I introduced uh, your presentation about Corvinus University in Budapest. So I hope you like your virtual booth and one on one, one meeting so far. And I hope our students will hear something more about Corvinus University in nearby Budapest. I hope so, yeah. Th thanks for the introduction. I, I have some slides as well, so I yes. would like to, Feel to, free share, to share your slides. And okay. I will let you know if it's like full screen. Can I uh, see it? And I will like monitor the questions. If there, if there is any question, uh, I will feel free to interrupt you and we'll answer them while you're presenting. Okay, how, sorry, how do I share? I can't see. It's uh... Oh, share screen, yeah, the green button, yeah. Okay, <laughs> got it. Sorry, I didn't do it on, on Zoom for a while. No problem, no problem. Um, yes. Is it good? Yes, just make it a full screen okay. and we're good to go. Okay, great. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, whenever you're ready, you can start. Okay, uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's nice to, to be here. I'm, I'm in Budapest and uh, I guess you're in, in different places in, in the Balkans based on who I met this morning. I had some really good good conversations with with people today. So, uh, Brankitsa or Victor or uh, Daniela, if any of you guys made it back, uh, well, welcome back and, and thanks for coming back. I wanted to to talk more today uh, about studying business and economics in particular in Hungary. And the reason that I've chosen this this subject is because Corvinus University of Budapest, where where I work for, is the leading. Uh, university in Hungary for, for these subject areas. So if you're if you're thinking about studying internationally, I think most of you are if you're you're at this event and taking part in this week's study study online week. Um, Hungary is a great option for you. I'm going to explain further why. And if you're thinking about Hungary as an option, there, there is no better university than Corvinus University of Budapest to, to, to study these subjects. Uh, and also social sciences. So uh, today, what we're going to talk about is why business and why, uh, why economics and why business and what the difference is between these, these two subjects. I'm pitching this at uh, an undergraduate level. So for those of you who are in high school who haven't studied any economics or business, uh, I want to give you a very, very quick introduction to what these two are and, and the difference between the two. If you're a postgraduate, master's student, these, these concepts will be quite basic for you, um, but I, I hope the rest of the presentation will, will be more relevant. Uh, in fact, there might still be some parts of the economics and business section that's relevant to you if you haven't studied these, these subjects before and you're thinking about doing them first time for, for a master's program. So why, why Hungary and why Budapest? Uh, then I'll give you a, an introduction to Corvinus University of Budapest, where, where I work. Uh, and then what comes next? Finally, questions. So Yavana and the VIA Academica team will be monitoring questions throughout. Please uh, use all the options available to post questions. And then we, we've got some time at the end and I will do my best to answer as many as possible. So first of all, me. Um, who, who am I? My name is, is Matt and I'm from London. This is not a Hungarian accent. I've, I've got used to saying that when I do presentations now. Uh, I've, I've had nine years of experience working with, with international students, uh, mainly for, for universities in the UK. 
So I've only been uh, in Hungary for for one year, and it's been been a great year. I've I've loved living and working in in Budapest and at Corvinus. But basically, my my whole graduate career has been uh, based around working for universities, doing doing admissions, doing marketing, doing student recruitment. I I, I am a senior manager, so I I love managing and developing staff as well. So. Uh, the kind of career that I think many of you will be interested in and people studying business uh, will do you know, lo lots of similar work to, to what I do uh, in the future as well. I think I'm, I'm qualified to do today's session because I've studied economics and I've taught business. So I think that puts me in quite a nice place to discuss the, the differences be between the two. I graduated from Leeds University in economics and mathematics in 2011. Leeds is a, a Russell Group University. Uh, these are considered outside of Oxford and Cambridge, the, the top group of universities in the UK that receive the most funding for research. Um, so it's a, it's a top 20, 30 university in, in the UK. I think it's a top 100 university in, in the world. I did, I worked at, at Leeds University briefly when I was a student as well, which, which gave me some really useful experience and helped me to continue my career in higher education. I'm, I'm also a lecturer, so I, I have taught business management and uh, my specializations are project management and, and marketing. I really, I really, really enjoy project management. Marketing, a lot of my career has been around uh, developing websites using CRM systems, uh, doing lots of digital marketing, doing branding, content writing. Uh, so I do a lot of marketing in, in my work and, and I later went uh, to go and teach that as well. And it was, was a very interesting experience uh, to, to see the difference between the practical and, and the theory. If you want to, to keep in touch with me, keep in touch with me. It's, it's that simple. Uh, my, my email address is below uh, and my LinkedIn is, is there as well. Some of you might not be using LinkedIn yet. I really, really recommend it. And a, a very positive case study was, uh, was me getting this job here in Hungary. I got the job through LinkedIn. Uh, so they found me in the UK, approached me and made me a, a job offer. And, and I accepted that. So uh, 10 years ago, it would have been quite difficult to, to find a job in another country. Um, with somebody headhunting you, but because of LinkedIn, this, this is possible. So uh, I really recommend using this uh, during your time studying, but particularly as you become graduates, it's a great way to, to build your network um, and, it, and it works. You know, it, help, it helps you to keep in touch with people that you need to keep in touch with. Oh, I forgot I put animations on this slide, sorry. So we just go to the, to the next one. Okay, why economics? So for those of you who didn't study any economics at all, I, I'm trying to explain this in a real kind of simple level. Economics is about allocating resources. Yeah, so by resources, we have natural resources that are made by the earth. We have resources that are man-made, um, things that humans have created plastics, but more sophisticated te technology or products. Uh, labor is a resource, time is a resource. So economics is about how we allocate these, these scarce resources. Scare, scarce means limited in supply, um, not scare resources. Sorry, I've, there's a typo on the slide, but it should say scarce. Um, and we allocate these, these scarce resources through specialization, trade and markets. What specialization means is that if I specialize in making something and you specialize in making something else, we can both be more productive than if we, if we both made, uh, did everything ourselves. So let's say for example, that I am a baker, I make, make bread and you work at a convenience store. Because I am a, a baker and I can specialize in, in making bread, I can gain efficiencies and become better at producing bread than you could, you could be uh, running a convenience store. And you can become better at running your, your store. 
So this is how specialization works. Over time, it allows us to produce better products, gain efficiencies in how we produce products and uh, produce them ultimately for lower costs. And then using the market uh, that we're allowed to trade. Yeah, so what you produce, you can trade with what I produce. We're making them at lower cost. And then we're able to get more of these scarce resources that we need. So this, this is economics. This is uh, microeconomics, really, and how uh, the, the principles of, of economics work. We allow to, uh, it allows us to acquire things that we want and need by trading with others who, who can make these things for us. And it's really it's a fascinating subject to study. Um, and all global issues have, have economics underpinned in them. So I think, uh, think of global warming, there is a cost to combat climate change. Uh, different economies and countries will need to work together to deal with this. It's the same with the pand pandemic. It's the same with poverty, uh, conflicts as well. Wars have huge costs financially. Uh, there's products that will be used. There's people that will be needed to, to fight in, in conflict. All these are economic issues. They have impacts on the economy as well. If you're a country that's, that's at war, uh, the, your economy will be struggling because people will be fighting uh, instead of being able to, to work and do their, their normal jobs or cities will be destroyed and there'll be a cost associated with repairing them. So economics is in, is in everything that, that you can think of. And what you really learn when you study it, you get very, very good analytical and problem solving skills. You do get some good business acumen as well. So you understand how different markets work. Yeah, so I talked a bit about markets earlier, but markets, you can also think of stock exchanges and now trading cryptocurrencies. It's anything that can be traded is, is a market. So you'll understand how different things in the world are interlinked at a very, very high level. You learn to think more analytically and to, to solve problems, like I said. So uh, you don't just watch the news on TV and accept it for what it is, you'll be able to understand what's happening behind that. You'll be able to think for yourself, hmm, is this true? Is it not true? Is uh, this also a consideration? And economics helps you to become a more, a more rounded thinker like this. And of course, you touch on finance, politic, law, regulation through studying economics. So economists, that you, you're basically going to be the smartest guy or girl at the party if you, if you study economics. It's giving you a deep, deep understanding into all these, these areas of society. Some would say uh, you could be a more responsible citizen as, as a result of having this knowledge as well. So, so in terms of soft skills, yeah, I said you'll be a rounded, rounded thinker. You're going to be persuasive. You'll be able to convince others uh, to go with you. This, this leadership influence. Uh, you'll be able to get your points across well in written and verbal communication. Economics, a lot of mathematics involved as well. Yeah, so I've spoken to some people today who didn't like mathematics so much. So maybe something like international relations could be a better program. But uh, with economics, you do, you do a lot of mathematics, so you need to have some, some calculus as well. And, and these skills are used to help you understand the, the markets that I talked about. So this is what economics is. It's a very theoretical subject. But through studying this theory, you develop a lot of good, hard and soft skills as, as a result too. Business is quite different. So they're often uh, compared to one another or considered together, but ec uh, economics and business are quite different. Business is extremely practical. So the, the principles of business are, you are going to learn how to run your own business or go and be a, a manager or a leader in any kind of organization, any country in the world. That's, that's what business is about. So it's extremely practical. Yeah, you're not, you are learning theory when you do business, 
but you're learning theory related to running a business or to managing, uh, being a successful manager in a company. And of course, it's extremely international. We, we can't think of business uh, within just our own small area. I, I'm sitting in a room in Budapest talking to you, some of you guys, maybe a thousand kilometers away at the moment. Uh, with the prospect of you coming to study in, in another country. So the, the whole world is interconnected now and uh, business, we, we have to think internationally. So the main, the main areas of business, we uh, I had a discussion with, with some of you today about what business entails. There's three pillars to business. So these areas are accounting and finance. So your business must make money. And you must know how to control the money in the business, how you make enough from selling your products to make sure that you have enough to cover your facilities, your building that you either have bought or, or rent, uh, paying your staff salaries, doing advertising. So you need to balance the books. Uh, ultimately, the goal is to make profit in business. HR. HR means human resources. It's all about the people. It's all about the people in the organization. So how do you manage your, your staff? What kind of culture does your organization have? Is it a nice place to work? Is it a horrible place to work? Do your staff take Wednesdays off work? Does everybody turn up wearing suits? Do they, do they, you have a more casual approach. So this is, this is human resources, how uh, you create a working culture and using the theories to, to manage staff, to train staff, to recruit staff, sometimes to, to discipline and fire staff as, as well. And then last, my, my favorite part of business is marketing. So the people who are very good with numbers, they always like accounting and finance, the math, the math geeks, uh, people who are people oriented like human resources, and people who like making money, uh, who, who like to be more kind of creative, uh, have good product ideas, uh, tend to go more towards the marketing side. So I, I quite, I like marketing. I like to, uh, to, to study this. I like doing websites. I like um, designing positioning uh, for a product or for a service. I like dealing with, with consumers. So this area of business is, is marketing. You study all three of these, and that's, that's really how you become a successful business person. Although there's, there's other areas of business and lots of soft skill development involved as well. Another key part of this program is that it includes an internship. The business is highly practical. You have to get some work experience. So while studying business at university, if you study at Corvinus in, in Budapest, that has an internship included, and we can help you to find internships at some, some nice companies in, in the city, which obviously is going to help you when you graduate to find a job as well. So again, on the, on the skills, uh, critical thinking, strategic thinking, uh, communication. So if you're thinking about communications as well, this could be a nice uh, Business can also be a great area to study. Problem solving, how to work in an organization, presenting, reporting, being a leader, managing projects, all these areas are part of business, hard and soft skills. And as I said, you're ultimately learning to run your own business or become a manager or a leader in any type of organization you can think of anywhere. Okay, I need to speed up a little bit. We've got 20 minutes to go. I want to give you some time for questions. So I'm gonna go a bit quicker through the, the next slides. So first of all, why hungry? Yvonne, yeah. hey, hi. Sorry. Um, we have a couple of questions, but I was thinking to leave them for the end, uh, if you're fine with that. For me, that's, that's good, if that's okay, because I can't read them or, or anything at the moment. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. can we do it at the end? uh you want them now or after the the presentation is over no let's let's wait let's do it after the presentation okay fine yeah thanks 
thanks for asking questions, guys, as well. That's good. Okay, why hungry? Who, who's even been thinking of hungry? Maybe not many of you. So some of you might know about the scholarship program because I've had some good, uh, good questions today about that. Um, and we'll discuss that in, in a bit. But the, the key reason I think to study in Hungary is that you can gain an education in English at a very, very reasonable price and a top, top, top quality education. So you can't study in English uh, in some other countries always. Yeah, so you, you don't have the selection of programs that you have. Hungary, we, we, Hungary is a small country. It's only 10 million people. It's a, a similar size to, let's say, Serbia. It's marginally bigger. But as a result of this, uh, not many people speak Hungarian in the world. And Hungary knows this. So they offer their education in English. And they even want their own students to study in English to make them more competitive in the, the international labor market to help this country compete internationally as well. So you study in English at a very, very reasonable price, four to six thousand euros per year maximum with, with Corvinus and get a top quality education. The other key point is you don't need any other language skills to study with us. So you need a B2 level of English and that's that's it. We're not going to assess any other language skills. Hungary is a, a safe country. Most of you are, are from the Balkans. The culture is not too different. Uh, maybe people are a little bit more serious, let's say in this, this part of, of Europe, maybe they're, you guys are a bit more chilled further, further south, but it's, it's a similar culture overall. And uh, people are nice. People are, people are quite friendly. They speak English very well in, in Budapest. It's a, safe, it's a safe country. It's a safe city. I, I come from London and yeah, this is, is a much safer place to live than, than London, I have to tell you honestly. I never felt any danger in, in Budapest. Yeah, sometimes I saw a few weird things, but I never felt un, unsafe here. And I, I can't say that about London. Uh, Hungary is very, very well connected, in particular Budapest is, so less than three hours to Vienna and Bratislava by car, less than four hours to Belgrade and, and Zagreb. If you study here, you have a great chance to gain EU residency to live in, and remain in the EU and then travel to other EU countries after you graduate. And uh, the big one is the scholarship program that we discuss in a bit more detail. This program gives you the chance to study for free in Hungary. Uh, so the four to 6,000 euro price that I was talking about is, is wiped completely. This is, a, this is free tuition if you get a scholarship. It's not a loan that you have to pay back. And uh, there's some additional for accommodation and living cost as well. So it's a fantastic opportunity. Why Budapest? Uh, well, I, I love it here. I was just telling you that I'm from London. I love London as well, but I'm, I'm very at home after one year in Budapest. The reason is that it's, it's very, very international. So I, I was surprised that you really can meet people from all over the world. And part of the reason is that there's lots and lots of students here and uh, lots of tourists visiting as well. So it's extremely international. The size of the city is good as well yeah this is a city of two million people so it's it's big enough to have an influence uh, on bigger bigger capital cities in europe uh, it's well connected through its airport as well there's multinational companies here at the same time it's not too big you don't don't get lost in this city you can you can pretty much walk anywhere um, if not there's excellent public transport as well it is a beautiful city. There's plenty of culture. Um, there's plenty of history and there's, there's great things to see. And uh, it's, it's stunning beauty. Really, really great place uh, and good weather as well in, in the summer, much better than the UK. Everything you could want, museums, coffee shops, restaurants, clubbing, 
bars, good transport, like I said, art galleries, whatever you want, it's it's here and it's it's reasonably priced in Budapest. When you graduate, you can benefit from the strong presence of multinational companies that have their headquarters here. So there's 150 plus, uh, and some of the logos I've, I've put at the bottom of the screen here. So fantastic place to, to graduate and to, to find work as, as an English speaker when you've, when you've finished your degree. Because of all of this, all the international people here, all the international companies here, the size of the city, the scale of the city, it's a great place uh, for opportunity for you to, to meet people and for you to change your, your future life after you study. So being in the classroom is one thing. The people that you meet in, in your classes, they're going to be very important to you. But all the people around you whilst you're studying uh, make a huge influence. Go and look at the, the top, top people in business, in politics, uh, in any aspect of life you can think of in your home country at the moment. Probably most of them have studied internationally. So this, this makes a huge difference on your future, whether you go back to your home country or stay somewhere else. And one of the biggest reasons is, is people, is meeting other people. So the networking is extremely important. How much does it cost? So very, very, very for affordable accommodation, 150 to 400 euros per month. Food, depending on how you budget. If you like high-end restaurants and eat out all the time, it's going to cost you a lot. If you cook, cook for yourself, uh, it could be as cheap as 35 euros a week. Transport, like I said, you can largely walk, but if you want a student metro pass to travel anywhere in Budapest, it's 11 euros a month. So uh, maximum, this is 6,000 euros a year for the living cost in, in Budapest, which makes it much more affordable than uh, somewhere like Vienna or uh, anywhere like Milan, let's say, uh, in Italy. Netherlands probably is a bit more expensive than this as well. So it's, it's the, probably the cheapest option for a quality education in English that's, that's available. I forgot again that I put these animations. Okay, scholarship program. This, this is the best thing about studying in Hungary. I have to be honest with you, but not everyone will, will get a scholarship. But you should, you should try to apply. So for next September, if you come from a non-EU country, so non-EU includes Bosnia, Serbia, and Montenegro, you can apply for this program. And if you're accepted, you will study for free. You'll get extra money for your living cost, so up to 120 euros per month. And you'll get extra money for accommodation. Or if you stay in university accommodation, you don't pay for it. So that's you either get an allowance for accommodation or your university accommodation dormitories uh, are covered. If you want to apply for the program, you must do so via the Study in Hungary website. We'll make this information available to you. You'll be academic or mentor. We'll help you with the application. We have experience of students from, from Serbia going uh, with the academic and enrolling to Corvinus University of Budapest for this program already. So they will help you with the application. Um, now, the only thing to be aware of is the eligibility is subject to uh, your nationality and programs. So for example, last year for Montenegro, all the bachelor programs were available. You could apply for anyone you want. But for Serbia, none of the bachelor programs were, were available. So we have to see what's, what's available. We won't know to, to mid-November. I think all of the master's programs will be available for scholarships. I think for, for Montenegro, probably for Bosnia, will be okay for most of the, the undergraduate bachelor programs. For Serbia, we'll have to see uh, which bachelor programs are available. If not, then you might have to consider the self-funded option or um, a master's later using the scholarship. So we just have to wait and see with that one. But really, really, if there's one thing you remember that I've said today is that you can study in, uh, in Hungary for free with this scholarship program.
So apply for it. It costs nothing to apply. That's the, the key message. How many people are accepted? So last year, one in seven applicants were nominated. The Ministry of Education in your country decides who is nominated. Um, and around 70% of people who are nominated then get accepted uh, to, to Corvinus. If you work with your academica and your mentor, or even with me, I'm happy to give people help on their applications. You're going to get accepted if you do the things that, that we tell you to do to prepare. So nomination is hard. There's not much we can do about that. But if you prepare quality application, you, you will be accepted. OK, uh, I'm going to finish in the next five minutes so we can do questions very quickly about Corvinus University. It's the leading university in Hungary for business and economics. Quite simply, if you want to study these, these subjects, we are the best in Hungary. Most of the influential people in Hungary have graduated from this university um, and it is in the top 2% in the world for business uh, through accreditations that it has. Uh, we have lots of international partners. We're ranked in the top 300 uh, in the world for business, economics and for social sciences by the QS. Um, and there's plenty of other awards and accreditations that I won't go into at the moment. Financial Times, top 90 in the world, Edge Universal, two in Central Eastern Europe. So we're, we're the best of the best in this region for these subjects. In total, we have 12,000 students at Corvinus and 2,000 of these roughly are international students coming from more than 80 different countries. So it's really, really diverse environment. I mentioned uh, top 2% in the world. If you want to do more research, you can research Amber and Equis. These are uh, signs of quality that only limited number of business schools have. I mentioned subject rankings, uh, double degree partners as well. If, you're, if you don't go through the scholarship route, there's a great opportunity to gain a double degree with uh, one of our partners in these other countries. I think we can explain that more uh, another day if you have questions about double degrees. Uh, and Erasmus as well, only if you're, you're not a scholarship student, great opportunity to go and spend a semester or a year at a, a partner university as well. These are the programmes in English. I've just listed the ones related to business and economics. You can see the fees, fees range depending on the program. Uh, of course, if you have a scholarship, then there's, there's no fees at all. OK, so what, what next before I finish? Speak to Via Academica. They're excellent and uh, their, their mentors, their consultants will help you to find the right program. They'll help you to apply to Corvinus and they'll help you with the scholarship application as well. If you want to apply for the scholarship, it's from mid-November to mid-January. Uh, if you want to apply as self-funded, uh, which is worth doing if you are not eligible for a scholarship, uh, then it's, it's going to be from early January via our website. And uh, Yovana is back on my screen, so that means it's time for questions. Thanks, well, everyone. you got quite uh, quite many messages, so okay. many questions. So um, if we start now, maybe we'll finish in in the next twenty minutes. <laughs> maybe, so. maybe I can answer some questions, and I can respond to people via email. If if you guys can collect all the questions, I can. Would well, that be good? Uh, after your presentation, we don't have any more, so we can, you know make the time for all of them now, or uh, you guys can uh, visit um, Corvinus University booth and even like leave there your uh, the chat option. So there are many possibilities. So that's a good point. Yeah, I will, I will be at the booth for the, for the rest of the week. So if we don't answer the questions well enough, please come back and, and see us at the booth. Yes. So uh, is there any placement test for your study programs as by Dorotea? OK, good question. So generally, uh, there's no placement test 
for business and economics undergraduate, uh, then there's mathematics test. And for all the other programs, there's an interview. And that's, that's basically all there is. So we're going to look at your motivation letter. We're going to look at your GPA, what you're studying. If you're a master's student, we look at your CV as well and your work experience. And of course, English language. For English, I think there's going to be questions about this anyway. It's, it's only B2. And what I'm really recommending to people is the Duolingo English test, which is our new requirement for this year. And uh, Duolingo is online and it's probably the, the cheapest test. It's only 50 US dollars. You need to look if other universities you're applying for accept it as well. We, we do. Um, and if you do this one, you need a score of 95. So these are pretty much all the requirements, but no placement tests, just mathematics for undergraduate business and economics. So they, they do need these math te tests, right? We will arrange the maths test. So it's not a placement test that you have to do before. Um, it's not like you, you don't have to do the SAT, let's say. Mm -hmm. Once you apply, we're going to invite you to do a mathematics test. Uh, with, with us and we'll give you some practice papers to help you prepare for that as well okay so uh you already answered uh this question is english proficiency test necessary for applying if so is duolingo acceptable so yes guys it is acceptable uh do i need any level of hungarian while studying in budapest at corvinus absolutely no and this is the, one of the key advantages. Yeah. So if you, if you go to Austria, maybe you need some German knowledge. If you go to Italy, you might need some Italian. You do not need any Hungarian. For your day-to-day -day life, you don't really need any. I, I started learning six months ago, and it's nice to have a few basics. And it's, it's kind of an interesting language to learn. By the way, anybody who gets a scholarship will get free Hungarian classes as well. Oh, great. So, yeah, you have to study if you get the scholarship, actually, but it's, it's kind of fun and, and useful. But you don't need any knowledge um, before you arrive in Hungary. But uh, you don't need any Hungarian to follow your lectures or, you know, sit for your test. So it's completely, if you would like to learn it, you can. Yes. Okay. Is there any program of management or marketing at Corvinus? Okay, so there's the business management and the international business. So as I was saying, marketing is one of three areas of business and the other two are finance and human resources. So any program called business studies, business administration, business and management will have marketing within it. And uh, we, we have the two business programs that, that have marketing. Okay, so not uh, like the program that will be called marketing or, or management, but you will learn about these subjects yeah. on your business uh, program. Okay. Yeah, at master's there is a marketing, uh, so at ma master's level you can do a specialist uh, master's of finance in marketing, but undergraduate level is covered within general business management. Okay. Uh, when is the best time to send my application for Corvinus? As soon as we're open in January for self-funded. And of course, uh, Yovana, you and your colleagues will let everybody know when that's time. For the, for the scholarship, we have to apply between mid-November and mid-January. So again, we'll, we'll make an announcement when it's time to apply. Email me, get in touch with me, visit me at the booth if you want to discuss this scholarship program more. And of course, we'll keep in touch with you on a, a more personal level and tell you when, when it's time to apply and discuss the best options with you. Okay. Uh, so Alexandra Stankovic asked, to which email address can I send you some more questions regarding the program and application, which I forgot during our meeting. I put your email address, Matt here and yep. uh, so you can step in touch with Matt via email address or on his virtual booth at Corvinus University booth so feel free to use that chat option as well yeah thanks Alex for coming back <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so um, are there any university dorms yes there are yeah there's about a thousand spaces 
in the university dorms. Uh, they're, they're the most affordable, I would say. So maybe 100 to 150 euros per month. There's private dormitories as well, which can be a bit more expensive, but, but higher quality if students want to stay in private dormitories. And uh, the other option is that you have your own, your own apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for people, for the first time, I recommend dormitories. For un undergraduate year one, it's the best way to, to meet people. So it's really worth staying in dormitories for at least one year. Uh, I saw on one of your slides that uh, for accommodation, if they receive the scholarship, there will be like um, 110 euros per month for accommodation only. So the difference between that amount and uh, how much actual price of the dorm is you're paying by yourself. Am I right, Matt? If it's private, yes. If it's a university accommodation, it's covered. You don't need to worry about it at all if you get the scholarship. Okay. Uh, so do I have to do math test if I have SAT? That's the question. Uh, that is a good question. I mentioned the mathematics test. There is uh, an exemption if you have SAT. I think it's level two in mathematics. I need to check what the exact school requirement is. I can't remember it at the moment, but there is, there is an exemption if you have SAT. Okay. Yes. But you have to have a certain like, you know, uh, number at the math part of the test. Yeah, that's, that's right. I'll have a quick check now whilst you ask me the next question of, of what, the, what the requirement is. Okay. Uh, can we do a study abroad here at Corvinus? Yes, if you don't have a scholarship. So uh, that's, that's one of the downsides of the scholarship, that you have to remain in Hungary. If there are so, any downsides. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only downside, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That and uh, there's the, the bachelor programs being available for Serbian students. Okay, and then um, can you tell us a bit more about double degree? I'm interested for France. Okay, yeah, the double degree is an amazing uh, opportunity as well, but you can only do it if you don't have a scholarship. So if you're, if you're self-funded, benefit from a double degree. Basically, a double degree gives you two degrees from two universities in the same time of studying one. So you don't have to spend any extra time to, to get a double degree. You're probably going to spend one year at a partner university. So for example, you, you could spend the time at Kedge Business School in France, one, one of our partner universities. So that's, that's how, how it works. So you get two qualifications when you finish, one from Corvinus University, one from Kedge in France. You pay only the fees of, uh, that Corvinus students would pay. And you pay only for the duration of your, your degree. You don't have to spend any extra time to get this. So it's another option that I really recommend uh, if, if students are not on the scholarship program. Another downside of scholarship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the, sa it's the same one. It's the same downside okay. as before. Because the, the, the rules are you have to stay in Hungary if you have this, this scholarship. So that's why any mobility program, study abroad, Erasmus, double degrees, you, you can't do that because you have to remain in Hungary. It's one of the conditions of the scholarship. Okay, and then uh, the next one is, are there any tests for master's programs? Okay, and I will just come back to answer the, the mathematics question from earlier. So. Mm -hmm. SAT level two with a minimum of 680 points and you don't have to do the mathematics test. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Masters, no. Um, again, we offer some kind of exemptions. So for anybody who's done the GMAT, uh, we can exempt you from the interview. But generally our admissions uh, criteria is that you do an interview for masters programs and discuss the program. Uh, and they will look at your motivation, how good your, your English is, and what your knowledge of the subject is, is like in that interview. Well, interview is like the, the, all of the universities are practicing to have interview with prospective candidates. So actually, guys, it's not a test, but you have to, you know, meet your admission committee and, you know, pass that 
test, let's say. So yeah. you have to prepare for it. Uh, how easy to find a job in Budapest during the studies? It's, it's very doable. And uh, it, you will be able to work up to 24 hours a week uh, if you're Serbian, Bosnian, Montenegro, and any, any non-EU nationals can work up to 24 hours a week with their student visa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's opportunities at the university. I, I have uh, an assistant who's a Bulgarian uh, student who's in her third year of the communications program. She works, works with me doing social media and, and websites. There are opportunities there. Uh, I see lots of students working around the cities, doing, doing bar work, uh, sometimes delivery work. Those who are really lucky can get internships um, in, in offices. It's, it's hard, but there are companies that recruit uh, people who are English speakers during their studies. It's, it's up to you. You can work uh, during the term time or you can work holiday time or you can do both. You, you have to find a way to balance it right. And studying is, is hard. Even if you spend 20 hours a week in the classroom, which is kind of normal for most of these programs, you should spend another 20 hours studying on, on your own. Doesn't always happen, we, we know, but th this, is, this is the technical requirement. Yeah, so it's like, it's like having a full-time job, really. And you do need Don't to party a bit. The students. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to study hard. <laughs> you need to have fun as well. It's really important to, to meet people, to have a good social life. So I would say start your program first, understand what the, the, the demands are going to be, and then you can start to look for jobs and other opportunities. Okay, uh, another two questions. Mm -hmm. What is the price uh, of a study program with uh, EU passport, so EU citizenship, and is it uh, possible to get a scholarship if I'm a, an EU citizen? Dorotea, maybe you met her on one-on-one -on -one meetings. If not, Dorotea, I invite you to also book one-on-one -on -one meeting with Matt. There are, I think, mm. still free slots. So just go to his booth and uh, click a schedule meeting. But now we'll, of course, answer your questions. Yeah. So uh, technically, the it says non-EU only are eligible for scholarship. So I, And I spoke to somebody else today. Uh, who was a Croatian dual national. Uh, so technically, it's not very clear uh, whether, whether or not you can apply if you have an EU passport as well. I, would, I will check it again and try to get the most clear guidance I can on this. If you have a non-EU passport, I think you're okay to apply for the, for the scholarship program. Don't declare your EU passport, I would, I would say, when you make the application, just to, to be safe. And, and in the meantime, we'll check all the regulations to make sure that it's, it's legal and it's not going to cause you any problems. Um, if you apply as an EU national, the fees are, are cheaper anyway. So it's, it's three, I put on the slide, the lower fee rate, it's 3,000 to 4,000 euros per year, depending on which program you choose. And uh, the benefits are that you can do those, those great double degrees, Erasmus programs, study abroad. You can, you can travel with your studies as well. Okay. Well, in, uh, in our experience, actually, you cannot avoid to show your EU passport. So, um, well, it's like mandatory to declare if you're EU citizen, if you're applying to EU universities. That is in our experience, but uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, I don't know what is the regulation in, in Hungary. You can we can check on that. Maybe Matt, you can check uh, yeah. check it out and and maybe step in touch with Dorotea, and then mm. she can um, decide about her application. Yeah, for the enrollment, you'll need to show your passport. No, no question about that. But for the Stipendium Hungaricum application, you only need to upload one passport. So I think. It, I think probably at the first stage, it's, it's okay. Okay. She says that she will book a meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. one question regarding the first part of your presentation, which I found very interesting. How Brexit influenced EU economics? <laughs> How Brexit? Perfect, a perfect candidate for this question. <laughs> we need more time for that one. Okay, so I invite you, um, because it's anonymous, I, I cannot see the name, but um, 
guys feel free to use free slots with with uh, Matt um, and to book one on one meetings or to use a chat option and I'm sure you will get all your answers uh, about studying in Budapest at Corvinus and something also related to Brexit I guess. <laughs> There's a great question I all I can say is that I don't live in in the UK anymore myself I know there's all kinds of problems for the UK at the moment. There's there's labour shortages. There's there's cost of uh, supplies from from Europe are higher because the transport costs are higher. It takes more time to get products across the border. So there's knock on effects as a result of that. So Brexit's really a disaster for the UK in my own unbiased opinion. For the EU, there's some implications, but probably much 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 less. I would say. Okay, so I have to say, Matt, that you got like the the biggest amount of questions out of all our universities so far. Uh, but I'm glad that um, there are many of you who are watching us today. And uh, I want to thank you, Matt, again for your really interesting presentation. I didn't expect uh, the first part at all, to be honest. And some things were like, were not clear to, even to me when you start explaining what economics means and what business studies means, but I'm glad we all heard it. And uh, I hope uh, for you, for prospective students, that many of our students uh, will start their applications for Corvinus this year. That's great. Yeah, we, we can't wait. Thank you. Thank you and see you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.